you sure? Shit. Okay. <clears throat> Attention all gamers, the VGAs are proud to announce that we have been acquired by Tencent Holdings Limited. All hail our Chinese overlords. Naturally some things will be adjusted to accommodate our new investors, but this should still be the same old award show you all love to hate. Gay Award for Best Eroge. This is gonna be a hard match. Not as hard as me, John. Koikatu. Ivenico. Rance X Degrees of Ludity Eventical versus Rance X you okay, Grigra? Ah, uh, so... I don't know, somehow Grigra looks excited. <laughs> We told our Chinese sponsors that this award was a demand from our audience and they relented. Looks like they don't mind it as long as it showcases the filthy Japanese degeneracy. Without further ado, after 28 years of blood, lore, and semen, Alice Soft brings Rance to a climax. Rance X returns to grand strategy, but with the series' highest stakes right from the start. Choices and replayability are king and tons of secret content will keep you coming. By the way, even though this is the final game timeline-wise, Rance 4 may still get a 0-4 remake, so odds are the Hyper Weapon will get at least one more chance to shine again. Until then, enjoy the ride. Deep Fry Award for the best JPEG. All hail our glorious leader. Pokemon. Let's go, Pikachu Eevee. Fallout 76. Hunt down the free men. Fortnite Battle Royale. Fallout 76 versus Hunt Down the Free Men. Fallout 76 wins. While others demeaning of a setting to the Americans as the previous Fallout entry, 76 still shows a good visual example of what could have become of them should tensions ever arise between China and the States. 
an ugly, dirty setting where everyone huddles up in the same shoddily slapped together cottage, rummaging through endless piles of polygons with trash textures pasted on top, and some trees that look ripped straight out of Skyrim. Bethesda's titles have never been graphically impressive, but considering how much had to be sacrificed to get a bunch of idiots clumped together on one server, and the obvious fact that this game is basically an asset flip, shows just how inferior American products are to those manufactured in China, under the watchful eyes of our wonderful government that ensures nothing but the highest of quality. してるの反省してます。本当だろうな。本当です。ならば二人の勝負もつかなかったようだし、罰ゲームは二人に受けてもらうことにしようと。そうやね。それは明暗や。Best Graphics Let's check in on the night's contenders God of War Dragon Ball Fighter Z Red Dead Redemption 2 Spider-Man Dragon Ball Fighter Z versus Red Dead Redemption 2 Redemption 2 We're not quite sure why a Western game, both in setting and in development, has won such a prestigious award, but it seems the masses have simply latched on to the familiar. Rockstar has carefully crafted a world that can only be described as stunning, with their intricate landscaping and eye for detail, even going as far as to put the game's horse balls on a pedestal. Westerners would, of course, put such emphasis on degenerate content, 
But I suppose an untamed society that places technical detail above loyalty to the ideas that uphold their world would ogle such pointless absurdities. Regardless of the features this game boasts, the American landscape is truly shown to be awe-inspiring, both in scope and detail, giving a glimpse of what could one day belong to us, prior to claiming it for civilization as any modern country would. Aesthetics Award for Best Visual Aesthetics. Subnautica. Return of the Ogre Dam. Dragon Ball Fighter Z, a fighting game that utilizes the original art style with stunning colors and a cell shaded environment is nothing new. That was a JoJo reference. That being said, Arc System Works is no stranger to the fighting game genre, so quality is to be expected with a title developed by them. The artists at Arc Sys have truly mastered this shader-induced visual style. There's a stunning attention to detail in almost every aspect of the design. Fluid movement and attack animations, stage-specific finishers that blend into the environment, and character poses and details pulled panel for panel out of the original manga. Even if you're a casual and have no idea what fighting game terms like negative edge or plus on block even mean, DBFZ is still an absolute treat to see in motion, and makes even our Great Republic's finest animators blush. Capcom may have a nice set of stones, but Ark's got even more balls. VGA Premiere
I knew all these paths once. Now they are as twisted as my own ambitions. Victories mount, so too will resistance. First sequel, Chun Di Wu. Let's see what we've got. Battlefield Five. Young Just Cause Four. Life is strange too. World of Warcraft. Battle for Azeroth. Life is strange too. Versus Battlefield 5. Battlefield Five. Well, none of the Battlefield games have been particularly strong in recent memory. Battlefield V stands out among them as an even worse sequel due to the plethora of asinine decisions surrounding the game. Launching a World War II shooter with only two factions, completely ignoring the war in the Eastern Hemisphere, including the atrocities committed against our fellow countrymen by the Japs, and turning a previously fairly gritty war series into one step below a hero shooter with a focus on loot and other collectible cosmetics to fuel microtransactions. 
Even Battlefield 1, a game filled to the brim with the typical Western AAA monetization issues, still at least kept to its World War I aesthetic. Instead, now we have le quirky robotic armed British women charging on the front lines. But don't worry, all this is okay, because the developers are on the right side of history. If the right side of history entails the continued degradation of Western culture, then let's all pray to Jinping that the capitalist pigs at EA actually turn out to be right for once. Just ignore the fact that the game was already 50% off only a week after launch. It's just part of that gorillion dollar marketing strategy. Best gameplay. I've got a few hundos riding on this one, so uh, <laughs> let's not fuck it up. Monster Hunter World. Hitman 2. Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Monster Hunter World versus Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Super Smash Bros. has had a long-lasting debate in the West as to whether it's a party game or a fighting game. Some argue the play style and control scheme is too simplistic to be considered an actual fighting game, while those who say otherwise note the high APM tech involved in the professional moves. But no matter where you stand on Smash Bros, it's fair to say that the gameplay is objectively great, and Ultimate is definitely no exception to this rule. Improving upon its predecessor from the Wii U and 3DS, we can once more play as our favorite characters from some of the most beloved SB926 games that many of us grew up playing late at night. The team over at Sora made sure to give every character their own unique feel and playstyle that would be sure to resonate with the players. Movesets, for example, that a casual fan of the game could guess of a character just from first glance. Whether it's the general movement and fluidity you appreciate, or the small details and technical nuances that really get you off, Ultimate's gameplay is something even the biggest competitive whore can enjoy alongside the most casual of players.
worst gameplay. Fu Shu Qi Liu. Seeing a lot of repeat players tonight. Is that even allowed? Pokemon. Let's go Pikachu and let's go Eevee. Life is strange too. Fallout 76. Detroit, become human. Life is strange too. Versus Fallout 76. Okay, let's get this party list started. Fallout 76. Look, Bethesda's RPGs have never been known for their amazing gameplay. Some of the best experiences from Morrowind were going out of your way to break the game's systems as much as possible. Fallout's always been more entertaining to watch break than it has been to play. But without the story and role-playing to actually keep the game afloat, what little enjoyment can be gained from walking around and looking for pieces of junk in trash cans is lost. Not for any particular cause, it's just how the game is designed. People who liked crafting survival games already had Rust. People who liked loot skinner boxes already had Diablo. Fallout 76 brings nothing new to the table and doesn't even try to expand upon the already existing ideas. No self-respecting member of the Communist Party would be caught playing something as unproductive or promoting of divisive individualism such as this. It was a shallow recreation with a Fallout branded coat of paint, and when the entire aesthetic of the game is everything being broken or covered in trash, that's probably not a look you want to sport. Crimes Against Gaming by Tsuo Incoming sweep! Loot boxes. Bethesda. SJWs. Sony censorship. Bethesda versus SJWs. More people on that project than we've ever had on any project. Um, but then the mobile game, Blades, is, um, it's amazing. SJWs. With SJWs winning, like half the controversies on this list win, I guess. But better to go for the blanket problem in the end. It's pretty easy to understand why they would win, though. They've shown up countless times in this show and never ease up. From Battlefield 5's tone-deaf marketing to Sony stepping up censorship after decades of pandering to desperate weebs, these guys should take some time off with how hard they work. Look, there's not exactly a whole lot to say here. After all, what hasn't been said? You want a speech? Go back and watch the last, like, four shows. I think they lost one year, actually, 
I don't know anymore, honestly. But we'll just keep putting him in the show every year and until you decide you like him, I guess. VGA Premiere. Best 2008 game. Shi Shang Dead Space. Left for Dead. Devil May Cry 4. Persona 4. Left for Dead versus Persona 4. Jesus, don't let that stop you from smearing it all over yourself. That's true. Left for Dead. Two thousand eight was a magical time, and Left for Dead got shat out right into the middle of it and came up into the perfect storm necessary to become a classic. Zombie survival games and films were just hitting their peak by then. Four-player co-op and console online had boomed with the seventh gen, and with the modding communities surging, many virgins got their first taste of full game modifications. With a colorful cast of characters that felt pulled straight out of a Romero film. The game got a boost in popularity with the countless memes and Gmod videos to come. Left 4 Dead had a very passionate fan base that loved the game enough to vote it over big contenders like GTA 4 or Metal Gear Solid 4, or weeb trash like Valkyria Chronicles and Persona. The players were perfectly content with running the campaign over and over again, as the AI system ensured no two games would be the same, dynamically spawning threats to match the player's skill. Best Trailer 
Gui Chi Wu. I had a lot of money on that last one. Time to make a few phone calls. Excuse me. Death Stranding. Cyberpunk 2077. Main issues sky high rate of violence. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Devil May Cry 5. We've known each other a long time. Devil May Cry 5 versus Cyberpunk 2077. You never had this much trouble. You're gonna make it. But it's there, just around the corner. And it keeps you going. Devil May Cry 5. I'll be honest with you guys, after five straight years of Kojima sweeping this dumbass award, we were considering nixing this entirely and just making a skid instead. Thankfully, it seems you came to your senses and gave it to something else for once. Unfortunately, it is still a Japanese company, but baby steps. It would seem, after receiving so much shit for all these years, that they've finally tried to right their wrongs with the Devil May Cry fans. Continuing the storyline of both Dante and Nero, it would appear they've added a third protagonist into the mix, giving the few fans of 2013's Dante a vehicle to express their black-haired, tattooed edgelord as soon as you pull the new kid's trigger. Combining fast, fun beats with the crazy and stylish combat and cinematics of Devil May Cry, this trailer reintroduced us to the characters in a way that satisfied everyone. Although the content isn't quite in line with core socialist values, DMC5's reveal trailer turned a ton of heads, and it stood out above the crowd as something from Capcom to actually remain optimistic for. Sweet handsome half we got from an internet equivalent of Friday to a fucking Monday. Do we really need to throw away all our original content each single day of the one fuck single content? Why not the push? At least then, we wouldn't have to go through what this monitor is implying. You know what? Fuck it. I'll fix it myself through the power of modding and other image boards. I gotta get good lasagna.
versus Metal Gear Solid. Solid. Well, I don't believe in coincidences. Something funny's going on. You didn't think you'd have a VGAs without Kojima popping up somewhere here, did you? Konami didn't invent the stealth genre, but they definitely changed the standards with Metal Gear Solid. Back then, the MSX games weren't as well known in the West, so a lot of the first 3D entry came off as fresh for us. Cinematic games often deserve the flack they get, but MGS was one of the first to use storytelling to give players a sense of immersion as the stakes grew ever higher. The developers were interested in making every sequence of it memorable, and having fun along the way with the player, by exploiting the medium of video games itself, leading to some of the most creative mechanics meant to fool the player and put an end to Snake's mission. Kojima placed fun and memorable experiences above the standard template of a game, taking risks and trying to make every noteworthy moment stand out. While the later games in the series would have some cool gimmicks to exploit, Metal Gear Solid 1 definitely had the most, and sometimes most bizarre, events the series had ever received. Video games aren't fun anymore. And I think it's because it feels like not caring about something isn't really an option anymore. Either you love something and you dedicate your entire fucking life to loving it, or you hate something and you have to be ready to fight to the death with someone who disagrees with you. You know, if, uh, if someone's three by three grid differs from yours by one game, then that means that the two of you have, uh, you know, one of you is an inhuman degenerate who has just wasted their entire fucking life. I think, I think somewhere along the way, we, we kind of lost track of what it means to enjoy things for the sake of enjoying things. I love video games so much, but I also routinely let how other people enjoy games influence how I enjoy games. When I complain that games have changed, I'm not actually complaining that games have changed. I'm complaining about the fact that people are enjoying games that I don't, and that they're enjoying games in a different way than I am. Fortnite isn't a dumb game because teenagers are learning how to floss or whatever from it. Fortnite is dumb because I'm getting older, and I suck at Fortnite. The only thing that's actually changed is me. And there's this deep anxiety in feeling like you're not enjoying games the right way, or you're not enjoying the right games. And there's this anger towards the idea that people are enjoying things that you aren't. And I don't know what the solution is, but this has to stop.
the roster's huge, you haven't seen anything. It would take literal days to listen to every song in this game one time over. Just how the hell did they even fit all those songs on those cartridges anyway? Anyway, Ultimate Soundtrack would be a case of quantity over quality if it wasn't for the fact that all of these songs were timeless classics. Sakurai's team plucked some of the biggest names and best versions of gaming's most iconic soundtracks, and it just goes to show that sometimes, size isn't everything. A Niki Award for the best representation of men. Ooh woo, look at that bulgy wulgy. Yakuza 6, The Song of Life. Yakuza Kiwami 2 vs. Yakuza 6, The Song of Life. Ikusa Kiwami 2 wins. Degeneracy in its highest form. Not only is V in love with mobsters, and Japanese ones at that, but they even nominated them twice. Luckily, China is exempt from this kind of stuff, and triads are a western lie. Anyway, I suppose a speech is in order, right? Yakuza brings out the masculinity V wishes it had, and gives them an opportunity to express this desire in the only way they know how, remastering the story and visuals of Kiryu's second journey. As well as the previously mentioned protagonist, you're also granted the pleasure of seeing fan-favorite Majima once more, alongside a fully grown and remastered Gota, among many others. Yakuza Kiwami 2 shows the nature of men in the land of the rising sun, setting an example of what masculinity should look like. Men are depicted as strong and courageous, just like the glorious and harmonious Red Nation Army. It can be said that Kiwami 2 is only a fraction, a small taste of what your ideal Chinese brethren are. Men should share no weakness. Men should be prosperous. Men should be ready to serve our chairman overlord with an open hand to salute, and a rifle in the other. Follow us on this retelling of a classic tale. Once more, my friends, you're in for a wild ride. And so we celebrate the passing of our year of the 2017, plus or minus one. And as we head into the grand year of 2019, I would like to mark praise for our hopes to the coming games. Metro Exodus, Metroid Prime 4, and the Call of Duty 2020 insert title here. To the coming year, I raise a toast to Vidya and to our board that we call slash five slash. Hail faggot. Hail faggot. Oh, fucking disgusting. Plot and Backstory Award for Best Representation of Women. Huh? huh? 
Wait, what? Oh, shit, the match. Senran Kagura Reflections. Soul Caliber 6. Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Torna, the Golden Country. Valkyra Chronicles 4. Soul Calibur 6 versus Torna, the Golden Country. Soul Calibur 6. Soul Calibur. For some of us, it means fighting. For others, it means character creation. For the patricians of this crowd, it means lust. The long-running series has blessed us with another entry, with the quality and assets necessary to stand abreast with the rest of the games this beloved franchise has produced. Like a freshly planted seed, embedded within the womb of a fertile colleen, Soul Calibur was forged from pure love from an endearing team who knew all the right spots to touch with their firm, rhythmic experience. Bringing us such beloved characters as Ivy, Taki, and Sofita, among so many more, there's a little of everything for us to bask in and appreciate. Something that touches upon all of our desires, our cravings, our deep, dark fantasies. The lads and lasses at Bandai Namco did not disappoint with their latest entry. And is that a shock to anyone? After all, it's got this show's fan favorite, 2B. Bless that mess, I confess to caress. Well, it seems that our former investors thought they had been investing in the Game Awards. So, good news and bad news. The good news, we're finally free. The bad news, Tencent has sent a private military to barricade the show, so we're kinda trapped here. But no reason we can't finish the show at least, right? Thank you for coming! Thank you, sir. We are so happy to have you today! This year, we had over 500 of you join us for the first annual E3 stream, the V3s, and it was rather successful. This E3 conference was just as interesting as the rest of them, and when we asked you what was the worst E3 conference, the votes are not that surprising. Coming in at number 5 was Square Enix with 736 sweet points, Bethesda was at number 4 with 865 sweet points, Ubisoft was at number 3 with 1073 sweet points, EA came in at second place with 1,156 sweet points, and who really pissed you off? Sony! At first place with 1,338 sweet points, only 22% of you predicted that. Sony started their press conference off with a guy playing a banjo, and then they showed The Last of Us Part 2. After a brief intermission because they had to go to another conference spot, they showed only three more games, and then they just went home. WHERE THE FUCK WAS THE GAME, SONY?! Anyway, their E3 conference was so amazing that they decided that they wouldn't want to make other developers jealous and have elected to not come to E3 due to the world changing. Maybe, just maybe, in another generation's time, we might see Sony wake the fuck up and understand what people really fucking want. This shit just never gets old. <laughs> VGA Premiere They say the storms roll the stars 
A thousand races have come through our galaxy, and a thousand races have died upon the storm front. Broken by rains that brought their ships to life, lightning that cracked open and drank suns, thunder that spewed forth nameless horrors. We are not next. We will fight whatever monsters the storm brings, tear through whatever it throws at us, kill the storm. Most hated. It's down to the finals. I'm so happy I died before this award show was made. Battlefield 5. Fortnite Battle Royale. Fallout 76 Metal Gear Survive Fallout vs. Battlefield I can't believe we hate women and people named Todd as we stand here today, we pray that the world will know peace. But if that is not our destiny... Hartmann? Dieser Idiot! Halten Sie sich den Mund! Er hat seine Pflicht getan wie befohlen. Wow. What a fucking surprise. Who could have guessed? Huh? Wait, what? Oh shit, the match. Bethesda tried to paint this as something Fallout fans have cried out for. They're crying alright. Because even the fake leaks were better than what got shit out. From Bethesda giving a PR announcement stating the game would be launching in a rocky state and trying to play it off as a quirky trend of the modern video game industry, to having one of the cornerstones of the pre-releasing marketing be a fucking Rick and Morty Twitch stream, nearly everyone outside of the most normal of normies could see this was a disaster waiting to happen. Between the mismanagement at Bethesda, the poor in-game experience, or just the laughably embarrassing physical incentives to actually giving this company your money, it's as if the classic Bethesda bugginess has manifested within the actual studio itself. Bethesda's been in some hot water lately. Between paid mods, Fallout 4's unpolished state, Skyrim's re-releases, and more. But nothing's really set the fan base off quite like Fallout 76 did. From day one, the shit hit the fan. Terrible aesthetics, even worse performance, the lack of an actual story, repetitive gameplay, and that's just covering the digital side of things. $200 bag? It's made of canvas. Compensation? $5 of credits. Requesting a replacement item? Your private information has just been released. Players find a dev room? Ban them without warning. Want some other controversy? Give it a week. I'm sure you'll hear of something. 76 has been this odd, perfect storm of everything that could possibly go wrong doing just that, and it's honestly no surprise why it's here. By now, I'm sure you've heard the problems a million times over, so there's no reason to stretch this out any longer than it has been. Avoid it at all costs. What about that fucking liquor they sold? Do you remember that shit? It came in a plastic bottle. <laughs> Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. Life is all there, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, blowing like the breeze. Country roads, take me home. Oh
Least Worst Award for Least Worst Game. I'm disappointed my favorite game, Fallout 76, didn't make it. If a Nintendo game doesn't take this award, I'm gonna say the end word. Red Dead Redemption 2. Monster Hunter World. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. God of War. It's down to these two contenders. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It's fucking in. In true tournament game fashion, Smash Bros. has crushed the competition to come out on top once and for all as the victor in this contest. With a plethora of stages, an overwhelming roster, and a music library the size of Nintendo's own game library, this entry has near limitless replayability and is always a hit at any party. That's not even touching the extra modes, spirits, and of course the elephant in the room, the DLC. Regardless of whether or not you seem to care about Smash, this appears to be the one hot topic everyone has an opinion on. And it has fanned its share of flames online, as for the first time ever, it feels like truly anything can happen. Striking a nice balance between the tism of Melee, the casual appeal of Brawl, and the quality of life changes heralded by 4, Ultimate's rebalancing of existing content and addition of long requested characters made the game appeal to everyone on both the casual and competitive level. Between collecting different costumes, spirits, and music tracks, completing the spirit board, trying to make it into Elite Smash, there's nearly endless amounts of content for anyone to enjoy. Living up to its name, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate can be described as only one word, super. Or ultimate. Two words, I guess. Well, that was a hell of a tournament. You know, we had a good time tonight between the matches and the buyouts and the immediate disassociation. It's definitely been an interesting year for Vidya. We hope you've all had just as great of a time as we have organizing this whole event, and let's hope next year's is even better. From all of us on the team, thank you for watching, and good night.
する人に対し抵抗を試みる人々はネルフだけではなかっただがその民間の開発した巨大人型兵器は公衆運転中に制御不能に陥る引き出物を配ることなくコレクターに終始してしまうマジにゲロマズの状況下残された20代すらもあとわずかしかない30の大台へのステップを着実に踏みしめている事実果たしてカジとの再会は彼女に与えられたラストチャンスなのか次回嘘と沈黙さーてこの次もサービスサービス